All right, this is MH4 Designs. I just want to, I'm going to do a little video how I make my spinners to spin my lures. I don't use a wheel because I like them in line based on how I do it. So what I'm showing you is we're going to use this little, the little motors. You can get these on eBay. I might even put some of these on my website because it takes months to get them when you order them depending on where you get them, but they're going to come from China anyways. So sometimes they come quick, sometimes they take a month. So anyways, they come in different speeds. This is a 2.5 to 3 uh, revolutions per minute. This is, that's very slow. I mean, if you're applying epoxy to a lure and it's just creeping along, it's going to drive you nuts. Well, based on the lure, but anyways, I, I like the 5 to 6. That's what I'm using here based on what I'm using. If I'm making like a casting egg, I like it a little faster because it's around and it gets in the groove of what I do. So anyways, what I do, I'm just we're just going to keep this simple. We've got two inch screws through the holes. And what I do is I put three smaller screws. This is where the, the motor's going to rest up against it. I think it's I put a I put a um, fender washer you're gonna need three fender washers and then the two screws on the outside I'll show you what those are first in a second so these three are the base this is where it's gonna go up against like this and the whole reason I do this is to keep some air because if these when these are spinning when you're spinning epoxy it's going to spin for hours and hours and they get warm and pretty warm in that fact. So what instead of just bolting it to the wood, I, I just keep them off the wood so a little air gets around them it's just to keep them cool because it's from China. You never know how long it's going to last. So so anyway, so this will this is the stop. And these are in these have the screws mounted through the holes. And I already have it rigged up because I mean, you could hot glue all this together. But, so the screws on the outside are, they're going to act as a stop. And they're going to, see how it keeps the, the washer straight? Well, actually, it's going to tow it in a little bit on the, let me just get this one up here like this. Okay, so now th the motor is not going to move at all. So the screw is pushing against the the the, uh, the stop and this is keeping the wash, washers from towing out so that's pretty simple so now we have airflow you know it's going to get really warm and this will let the heat dissipate off of it so now what I do is now I just get one of these things from Home Depot like a lamp switch so all I do is I used to mount them down here but then when I have four or five of these in a row it's hard to turn them off when it's down here so uh, I changed them all up to here it's easier to turn it off so I just throw some hot glue mount it on there and while that's drying So another thing I do is I take a a ring and I put it through the hole here. I don't think this ring's gonna work. Okay. This ring will work. I put the ring through there. So I don't want it to f flop down because you'll see in a second why. It all it all works out. So what I do is I just you could uh, once you uh, you could throw some epoxy on this later on when you're mix when you're having it mixed up coating the lures. So what I try to do is get it perfectly lined up, and I'll show you why I do this. It just makes it so much easier to uh, unhook the string of lures. 
So, anyway, so we take this. So all we're going to do is just hook this up like a regular switch. I don't know. I'm not an electrician, but it's pretty simple. So that one goes there. And what I do is whenever I have like, uh, I've been converting my workshop over to the LED uh, fluorescent lights or whatever, LED lights. So the old ones I've been cutting the cords off. I don't know why, I just cut this cord off off something and, uh, instead of buying it. So what I do is just you put one on there. And you could buy, you just get an extension cord and cut it off. Like that, poke it out the hole, and that's basically done here. So now we take the other one and we hook it to the other. I mean, you could use a wire net or whatever, but I'm not going to get into that. Probably a wire nut would work, but I just don't I have one handy. So what I do, the reason I don't make these so permanent because if the motor goes, I just have to, that's why I keep a couple extra motors with me. Just hope to God that they don't go at the end of a run or the beginning of a run. So we can swap it out. So now the ring is set up there. That's pretty much it. Let's just do a quick check. All right, you can see it, it working here. So it's spinning. That's what a, you know, I always kind of put five to six on there just so I know the motor speed. You could do it right here. So that's a good workable speed. So this is the, the spinning end. So what this does, I'm going to move this. So this is how long it, so this is the other end. I just took this and I put um, a nailing guard. I glue it down, you can screw it. But what it does is I put the, the magnet on here because all the stuff I make is never the same length. And uh, you could, I could always, with the um, S hooks like this, you have tons of S hooks. So this is, um, the S-hook will come here, I'll give you an example. So this would be one lure in the line. So if I just wanted to do this one lure, I would just get a piece of wire and string it all the way. Well, this, this will actually go to here. So, well, I'd probably do multiple lures, but... If I just wanted to do one lure on this rig, I would just, you could hook up multiple S rings till you got to here, which I've done that before. But this, and this is a tip, you, you always want a little bit of drag on here. So 
I just got went through the solid wood. I think metal is actually the best because it drags because then it won't flip on the weight of the lure. But this is adjustable for length if I want to go this far. As I fit as many lures in there as possible. So, so this is adjustable end. And that's how I do my uh, spinner. So when you're, when you're done, this is why this ring, you, you come and you pull the whole ring, I mean, whole stack of, uh, I'll give you an idea. So this is how I rig it up. I put one S-hook here. Another S-hook here. Okay, so I do more, I hit like this is a needle and a glider. So I can just, so this is so long. So I'll hook it here and I run it over here. And then I could put up, like I said, a bunch of S-hooks in multiple lengths to get to this hook. And that would spin them. I can epoxy them or do whatever I need to do. So anyway, so I have, a, I have probably about 15 of these, which I put them in a row. And that's why I like the um, the switches on top, so they just line up on the table, screw them to the table, and uh, it's all good to go. So this is why I don't use a wheel. A wheel is just something that I don't like because when I'm done with this, I can just take the five, six lures off and go hang it up as a cure. So, anyway, so this is how I make my spinners. All right, thanks for watching.